Hey guys, S for Arcade, and I'm here today to do a different type of video that is not gaming related. It's actually computer related. So I've been thinking for a while about doing some computer videos because it's a minor hobby of mine. And I have here, I have finally obtained my very own Silicon Graphics Octane workstation. And this is kind of like a boyhood dream of mine. This is the front panel of it, sitting on the ground. Um, I've always wanted a silicon graphics machine, and uh, growing up in the 80s and 90s, silicon graphics was the cutting, bleeding edge of all 3D and visualization, so I just had to have one. I got to use one or two of them hands-on uh, in the 90s when they were at Disney. They used to be at Interventions in Epcot, and they had a... They moved around a few times in there, but one of the setups they had actually let you play with the workstation. You could play with an indie. And I remember tinkering with the 3D demos and just jaw hitting the floor because you could render stuff 60 frames a second. So ever since then I've wanted one. The only problem was they cost as much as a very nice car. Um, this particular machine here, the Octane, was starting around high $20,000 mark and it went up in the 30s. Uh, you could pay as upward to $35,000, $38,000 for one of these fully loaded. And that's before your software licenses. Add another fifty dollars in software licensing and you can see why these machines are so expensive. But they did 3D and uh, floating point calculations like nobody else's business back in the 90s. They were just so far ahead. And take a look at this hardware. I mean, it's, it's insane. So I've taken that front panel off. I've taken the machine down and apart. I haven't even powered it on yet because uh, I've been after one of these for a while. I knew exactly the kind of specs I wanted out of one. And then instead of doing just going and buying one, I just randomly bought the cheapest one I could find that had no specs mentioned at all and no guarantee that it's even going to work. The guy said it makes a noise when you power it on. That's as far as he could test. So I bought it for 99 bucks, And uh, I said... Hey, all right, you know what? I don't need specs. It's an old computer, right? What are you going to do? Old is old and slow is slow. There's no getting around it. It doesn't matter if you have a dual CPU or not. But I lucked out. I really lucked out. So here's the front of the unit with the skin off. These are the hard drive uh, sled tray. Uh, this is where they would slide into the mid-plane here. Uh, everything's uh, SCSI, as you can see in the back there. I got one, two SCSI connectors and a third on the top, so you can expand this to have three built-in SCSI drives. There is this funky little uh, connector down here, it's like a DB15, it's not a DB15, maybe a 13, uh, strangely enough. I, I noticed this when I took it off, I've never seen this before, and I'm not sure what that does. I got a fan exhaust port here, and there's some fans up in here. You can see some radiator grill kind of uh, thing right here, it's a, mainly a dust port, I think. Right there again, it's like this nice honeycomb. I mean, this thing is solid. It weighs like 50 some odd pounds when you pick it up. It is so heavy. And this is mainly why, look at this. This is the PSU. This comes, oh man, this thing's big. Looks like the Ghostbusters trap, you know? I mean, it's massive. It is 600 and, uh, what, 20? I output is 623 watts. I'm reading the sticker upside down by Lucent Technologies. They made two PSUs for the Octane. This is the lower level one. This is an older Octane, by the way. But you can tell by the, the green skin and, of course, the classic Silicon Graphics logo and the classic Octane styling. For me, it was important to get one of the old ones because they rebranded this midstream to just SGI. That was thanks to their, their new boss, which ran the company into the ground. And uh, then the Octane 2 came out afterwards. So you only get better hardware with the later revisions. But I have the classic looking silicon graphics machine. And this was the big boy workstation. This was, I mean, you could fit this on your desk or next to your desk. But this was the big boy workstation. I mean, it really was the powerhouse. You know, after this, you got into like the Onyx, which was more of a server type machine. But um, anyway. Continuing on, I got two drives with this machine, both of which say U.S. government property, um, unclassified data, but very nicely enough, 36.7 gigs, two identical 36.7 gigabyte SCSI drives, 
Well, these are like Ultra 160s, I think. Ultra 3 SCSI. Um, these will do very nicely. I don't know what's on these. This one here has a tag. It says 4 gigabit, gigabyte IRIX 6.2 October Q1. And there's a stamp that says August 8th, 1997. I don't think this is 4 gigs. Obviously, these came much later. Somebody's probably updated the software. I don't imagine they're running on IRIX um, uh, 6.2 anymore. They're probably on 6.5. And this looks like a data drive. Uh, 36 points, uh, 36 six. I don't know what that means. And it has someone's name here. So there's a I, I can't even understand what it's written on there. But nonetheless, two drives. Be great if just one works. And then um, going over here, this is the lock bar. This lock bar actually slides in this hole here and you can lock your I have it upside down you can lock this closed see that goes in the back that's where you can put your lock and you can make it so nobody can open your machine and this here is the brain and guts of the operation this is the IP30 main board and lucky for me, it is a dual CPU main board. You can tell there's one CPU there and there's one CPU there. Um, being an older model, I would imagine this is an R10,000. If I'm really lucky, it's an R12,000. But, you know, judging by the rest of the specs, I wouldn't be surprised if it's an R12,000. Fingers crossed. I can't power it up at the moment because I lost my monitor cable. I had to buy a monitor cable adapter, which will be here in a few days. And I'm excited because I can't wait to see if, number one, it powers up. I might just try cycling the power to see if it even starts. Uh, but it also came with some RAM. At first glance, I was looking at this and it said 64 megs, 64 megs. I'm thinking, oh, okay, so it's got 256 megs of RAM. But then the other two models, modules in the front are 256s. So that's, like, super awesome because that means I have 640 megs of RAM with four open slots. This board being the first revision of the IP30, I can squeeze up to 2 gigs on there, which is fair enough. You know, if I go out and I buy the, the later revision, I can have up to 8 gigs, and I can put the better CPUs on it. So, probably completely unnecessary to even do that. You can see in the back some of the ports. Got a pair of serial IOs, PS2 mouse, parallel, 10100 Ethernet, there's my SCSI external port. I have uh, digital audio, and I have analog audio. It's kind of interesting that they put a coaxial audio um, port on this thing. And then here, of course, this is your mic, your speakers, and your power for your speakers. Very strangely enough, they, they went ahead and, and they modulated this down to 10 volts for you so you can power your amplifier for your speakers. Very strange. And then this over here is the graphics board. And lucky enough, this is an MXI graphics board because it is the big mother. It's got the two heat sinks. It's full length. And not only that, it has two 4 megabyte texture models modules installed already, which are called TRAM modules, which allows you to do texture mapping. So if you didn't have these, you could not do anything but flat shading. It would be kind of boring. So I can at least use texture mapping. That doesn't mean I get 8 megabytes of texture RAM, unfortunately means I get twice the performance from my four megabytes. Uh, so yeah, it's big, pretty big graphics board. And this is a dual-sided board here, this XIO module. There's two more blank ports below where I could install other XIO devices. So what I'm gonna do is put this whole thing back together. And hopefully when my monitor adapter shows up, I can show you what you need. This is the 13W3 monitor port. Unfortunately, this is the wrong adapter. I bought this for four bucks and I didn't even look to see if it was male or female. That's me being stupid. And of course, on the back here, it's got a male as well. So I need the female cord to convert this over to VGA, HD15. 
And this here is a stereo, stereoscopic 3D out. This is a little pair of 3D glasses. I guess they had this for uh, various video output for other devicing kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm really excited because I've always wanted an SGI and I can't wait to play with this thing. It's a big toy and I'm hoping my $99 investment does well. And if anything's kaput, I would imagine it would be this thing. And you can pick up a new PSU, about 50 bucks. So I'd hate to spend more money on it, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so that's it for today. And next time I do a video, maybe we'll power it up and see if it works. So I'll see you later. Bye.